Welcome to the podcast Unimagined, where current and former students share how they imagine education in schools could be regarding student leadership. We ask them to share about their experiences and offer advice on how we can all do better. In this episode, Taylor and I interview Jada. Very interesting story because she is one of the students who began at a new school in COVID. I think it's so fascinating to think about how connections can or can't be made due to proximity. I'm sure she had her friend base going into her new school, but one of the really great things about starting in a new school is the opportunity to meet a new set of friends and to reimagine yourself. These students who started in a new school in the 2021 school year had a really unique experience. I don't know if they would say that it was a great experience, but they had a different experience than many of us who has always started in person. Thank you so much for taking the quiz, and I hope you enjoyed being able to see those strengths. Do you mind telling us a couple of ones that you especially feel like fit your personality and how they may apply to your leadership style? I think humor definitely is in my personality and helps me be a leader because instead of taking a serious approach to the things I do to be a leader, I like to make it more fun and just have fun with everything. I use my humor to get me through my hard moments especially. Perseverance too is a big one for me because I don't really give up. If I mess up, I will definitely go back, find the issue, and try to fix it. It's interesting because you're not the only one we've had so far as humor as their number one, which is cool to see. It's it's really, I think it's a like cool trait to have in the top five. How long have you been doing cheer? I've been cheering since I was five, so that's almost 10 years now. I started off my first year doing school cheer, and then I switched to all-star after that. Where do you think your leadership abilities would be had you not joined cheer? I'd say school or maybe being a big sister would definitely. What do you see as a leadership opportunity? I see a leadership opportunity as you getting to do something based off your leadership skills. Like I think this is an opportunity. I consider this one. You mentioned that you feel um, your leadership started to develop when you were in fifth grade. Can you elaborate a little bit about that experience? In fifth grade, I was really into doing clubs. I'd already been doing yearbook, maybe like Spanish or French. I saw that they had leadership and you had to fill out an interview questionnaire. They would pick a select few students, so I saw that and I was interested in it. I ended up getting picked to be in the club by the principal. It was just a really fun opportunity to like grow and develop those skills. As a high school student with driven motivations and connections to academics, there was a lot of pressure to do things and be a part of things. Do you feel that pressure as a freshman? I definitely feel a lot of pressure. I feel like I started in middle school. I take my grades really serious. I would definitely say I do have a little fear of failing. So I take all my work seriously and there is that pressure to make sure you're getting good grades, staying on top of your work, the due dates, especially with all this remote stuff, it's forced me to get on a stricter schedule. We've interviewed a couple of different groups of people, but a lot of the students that we talked to in the past couple of weeks have said that it's been really hard to find leadership opportunities right now where everything is either virtual or only like hybrid. Has that been a struggle that you have also been facing? Especially being a freshman, I'm trying to get comfortable with a new school, and I definitely have been wanting to join clubs, but they're not really advertising for any after-school activities right now. Once we go back, and I really want to start getting into a club, probably a leadership club or a National Honor Society, something like that. Do you know what clubs are available at the school that you go to, and do they sort of correlate to the interests that you have? I actually don't know of a lot of clubs clubs that the school has because they haven't really talked to us about them. 
it seems like that's one of the disadvantages of having started as a ninth grader in the remote setting that you're not aware of all the opportunities that are available to you. Do you feel like in general, schools provided you with leadership opportunities Very few. I feel like to earn a leadership opportunity, you have to like stand out. And I feel like I struggled with that for a while. I would just be more quiet. When you say you are maybe a more reserved or quiet individual, do you feel like you've been pushed to become something you're not? Or do you feel like you can still be a leader while being a quiet person? Do you feel like you need to be, you've been pressured to be that outspoken, always there, that kind of student? Well, my parents put me in the cheer to start like talking and it definitely worked. So after that, I started to be more outgoing. But to be a leader, I think you definitely have to be a little bit outgoing because you want to lead groups. Even if you're not comfortable to talk to new people, you still have to lead even if you don't want to. I can see how cheer facilitates that outgoing confidence What struggles have you faced when developing your leadership skills? And then what's something that has come pretty naturally to you? My biggest fear is trying to become a leader was coming off as too bossy. Certain individuals don't like being led. Sometimes they like to have their own ideas and do their own thing. Sometimes they think when you're trying to lead them, you're trying to boss them around. And I definitely have come off that way sometimes, I'll admit it. Everything's been hard. Like, it it didn't come easy to me at all. Everything I had to work for and I had to grow to become a leader. It's interesting that you say that part about being bossy because I think that's something that all girls fear is coming across as kind of in your face or just that word bossy that has such like a feminine connotation with it and I think a lot of young girls are really nervous to be rejected or dismissed with that and it's hard to hear that I still feel like that every day when I go to work that's really scary and it's really cool to see that you are talking about how you've gotten past that because it's not easy. (laughs) Put yourself in somebody else's shoes who has taken on a leadership role in a group setting. Do you feel like those students are being bossy? Taylor was just saying, is it something of our own making or are we being bossy? I think it really depends on the person because sometimes I can work with a leader, someone who's trying to lead me as well. And sometimes I can feel like they're being bossy. You just have to go a certain way about it and make sure you're being gentle, but also being a leader. Yeah, it's hard to, I think it's hard to find that balance. But once you are able to get in like a groove, then I feel like you know where the lines are. Do you feel like you are able to take feedback from your peers about that nature of trying to be a leader? Yeah, I'm able to take feedback. I actually like it, especially with cheer and school. I like correction. What advice do you have for adults when it comes to either helping students or giving students opportunities or guidance, anything like that? I feel like teachers need to recognize and be aware of each student's struggles, what they're good at, their strengths. It's really important that they get to know each student and can help them the best way they can because especially for teachers and coaches, like that's their job is to help the students and make it the easiest situation they can. Just remind them that they're doing good job keeping them motivated is important you mentioned that a comment like good job or i'm proud of you how much that means to a student why do you think that adults don't offer those comments more often i think sometimes adults get too focused in what the student or just what the kid is not doing more than what they are doing it's easy to pick out the things that they're missing and not doing right than to just say good job. I think you're right. I think what I am finding as I'm sort of going on my own journey of discovering student leadership that oftentimes it's far easier to identify the negative components about ourselves. It's often easier to identify the negative components about others. And rather than taking that challenge to find positive things, we 
tend to go down that easier route. And I wonder if your experience feels more negative, especially this year, not being remote only, but because everybody is struggling with how hard all of these aspects of education are right now, are we being more negative as teachers in general? And are we being more negative as peers in general? Yeah, we are being more negative right now, especially since everything's online. You can see more of what the student's missing. I hear teachers and parents say so much, you're missing this assignment. What would you say for the kids that just don't have access to that positive reinforcement? I would definitely tell them to stay calm. It's not easy to be a leader or stay organized when you're stressed constantly. It's good to just take a step back and look at the bigger picture take everything step by step and just stay organized with your assignments and stay calm with yourself. What advice do you have for students on developing their leadership skills? I would definitely tell them what I wish someone would have told me and to look at all your opportunities. Try and talk to a teacher, talk to your parents about how you could develop those leadership skills. It's easier to ask so you can find better resources than trying to look on your own. Is cheer predominantly the only activity that you focus on? Yes, I cheer five days a week. It um, takes up a lot of my time, but I have done sports in the past, basketball, soccer, swimming, all that stuff. Cheer is the one that you're most passionate about. When I was doing basketball and soccer, there were groups based off of friends I had already met in school. And when I did all-star cheer outside of the school environment, I met a lot of new people. And these people have been my friends for like eight years now. And I have a better support system there. I'd definitely say I am happy I chose that instead of basketball or soccer and just doing that with my school friends because I definitely feel like the people I met along the way of my cheer journey. It's great to have those friends in your classes, but it's also really cool to create a network. You said everything's about opportunities and the more connections you have, the more opportunities you get. I'm going to ask you a question as a mom because I have two young boys and they are, they're older than you were when you started cheer. They are currently playing different sports and they haven't focused one particular sport. And yet some of their friends have identified one particular sport as being the sport that they participate in. So if you could tell a parent, what is an approach that you think would be good for their children in terms of participating in sports? I think all parents should make sure that they're child is participating in at least one sport it's definitely good for them health wise social wise i think playing more than one sport is good too i just happen to do one that takes up a lot more of my time but i have friends that play two or even more sports and they love it what leadership opportunities does cheer specifically afford you I'm on two teams, junior team and a senior team. The junior team, I am one of the oldest and the senior team, I'm one of the youngest. So I definitely get to see both sides of it. On my junior team, I help the younger kids a lot. I lead them with good advice. The benefit of that is just seeing them learn and grow and they're turning from little kids and they're starting to mature. It's really just fun to see. I want to go back a little bit. Cheer is a female-dominated sport, correct? When you are in the classrooms or in a different environment, or if you've ever played any co-ed sports, do you feel a change in either your leadership style or just like your demeanor? I'll be honest. I definitely feel like I would be more of a leader in an all girl setting. I do have a few boys on my team, but it's mostly girls. I feel like it's easier to lead women than men. Why do you think that is? Stereotypes of what men will think or what they'll say. I feel like especially teenage boys, they don't really care what you have to say. I have observed something as a teacher in high school that's, I'm curious to get both of your perspectives on this. I find that in high school, the females are far more driven, far more organized, far more successful than many of the males that I know. And yet 
as soon as high school ends, I feel as though that switches. I feel as though men dominate the success. Men, it appears that more successes are afforded to the male population. It's actually proven that women work harder for less, and that's just something we have to face here today, which is not right. I definitely would like to change that. Being in the setting of both in the past couple of years, just because I'm a junior at, at URI, being in both the high school and college setting, I still think that people who identify as female are, based on my classes, are more driven. But that's not to say that there aren't men who aren't. It's just that I think that because of the society we live in, there are more opportunities for men. It's definitely a day-to-day thing that I consider in my major, going back and forth between what is offered for both genders. I have classes on race, gender, and and it's all about opportunities. And you can't have success without opportunities. If the opportunities aren't there for women, then they're not going to move on. So I wouldn't say that it switches when people get out of high school. I would say that just the opportunities are lessened. Do you think that there are more opportunities for females and I, and I like how you recognized identified females. Do you think that there are more opportunities in high school for students who identify as female? No, I think it just depends. I think boys don't take the opportunities. I feel like they have them, but they just don't choose to take them. That's really profound for me to think about as a teacher, because I think you are absolutely right. I think the opportunities exist equally in high school for both male and female. In the high school setting, females are more likely to take them. The intent or the interest for the males is lower in high school. So that is a very important reflection for me as a teacher to think about that the opportunities are probably more available to females because the lack of interest. Are there questions that you would like our audience members to think about? I think it's important for everybody to question if they're happy with the direction they're going in, happy with the opportunities they have. I think it's good to think about something you could do to better yourself. And I want to thank you for your thoughtfulness and really glad to be able to offer you this opportunity. Thank you. Yes, thank you for being here. It was so nice to meet you. What I really liked about this interview with Jada was how we analyzed and discussed some of the struggles that are had for females, females trying to be leaders, how we navigate those challenges. And maybe it's something we think about as we are building leadership opportunities for both students who identify as female and identify as male, thinking about the aspect of boys not really taking advantage of the opportunities in high school and those who identify as female struggling through being a strong leader and some of the terms that come along with being a strong female leader. As I come to the end of season one, I have learned so much from the different students that I've interviewed. I've loved the opportunities that we've been able to have by interviewing eighth graders all the way up to high school graduates from seven or eight years ago. There's a wealth of knowledge that we have been able to tap into as we interviewed all of these students along the way. I'm excited and sad as I end this season. Taylor and I have not been able to find a common time to do the recordings together. She brought so much to this podcast with me. If it wasn't for her, I don't know that I would have gotten it off the ground. So I'm really grateful that Taylor was able to support me during that time. I'm not sure where season two will go, but I know that I have a wide range of new students who are eager to be interviewed to hear their stories. So stay tuned for season two. Thank you for listening to another episode of Unimagined. If this episode spoke to you, like it. If you think someone else could use it, share it. Or if you know of a student who has a story to tell, connect them to us. You can find me on Twitter 
at L Connell 20. The theme music for this podcast was written and produced from a former colleague of mine, Keith McClendon, who is also an educator at a vocational school in Massachusetts.